my first question is, when did you discover your talent and decide to become a full-time Sontero? Well, I don't know that I particularly had the talent. I gained it, you know. Uh, I decided to make, decided to start making Santos because of a religious experience I had. Uh, I thought in, this, uh, in the process of that discernment that Santo making was dying out in Colorado and uh, that people missed it. People uh, were nostalgic for it. So that's why I started. But I didn't have any serious uh, art skills at the time. Uh, so I joined a carver's club to learn how to carve and I learned to use acrylics by taking a, checking a video out of the library. And <laughs> but I did take lessons from Joe Sakura, a Bavarian trained carver, mm -hmm. and from Bob Zettner. But I think carving is sort of like a, you know, a lot of high-end uh, crafts like weaving and uh, embroidery and things like that, which is that a lot of people could learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. It just takes... <laughs> it takes practice. Well, it just takes the desire to do it and yeah. to stick with it. And uh, I would say there's some technology involved, you know, knife sharpening and tool selection and stuff like that. But it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it didn't take, a, it wasn't a big leap, you know, to do that. From what I did for a living, uh, was a big leap. You know, I was an academic, uh, you know, a bureaucrat type person. You know, I was a, and from that to this was, you know, a huge mm -hmm. leap across. You know, but in a positive direction, a human direction. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So, what are the challenges these days um, for carrying on the tradition? Well, I think they're. Um, more open now than it used to be when I started 22 years ago. I started in 1992. Uh, now I think the the uh, appetite or the tolerance of diversity is greater now in the art sphere than it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And Santos had become, I thought, ghettoized, like kachina carving and stuff like that, where they were not universally but it's a universal expression because Catholics, I mean, Christianity is a universal expression. Mm -hmm. It's not related to one culture. It's not related to one language group. And to the extent that the uh, Santos escape from their little uh, ghetto, <laughs> uh, I think that's all very positive. And it does seem to be the case. For example, Kathy Robles Shaw and I uh, juried in to celebrate Colorado artists, which, and we were the only two this is 350 Colorado artists in all different, you know, jewelry, this and that, painting. Anyway, and Kathy won Best Artist, and I won <laughs> Juror's Award. So, you know, so the general art community, and that's, a, that's more or less an artist-judged and artist-sponsored activity. So that, that, to me, that meant that the general artists, artists in general, were open to Santos mm -hmm. and, uh, and the public, too. And then since then, I've, I've juried into a bunch of different non-Santo show, like uh, uh, North American Sculpture Exhibition, okay. won an award, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, what are the materials you use most often in your work? Well, Santo's art is uh, providential or opportunistic. So the idea is that you use what it presents itself. The most prominent examples of that, for example, are uh, when the Union armies came to New Mexico in the 1860s, they threw their, they brought kerosene and lard in five gallon cans. When they used up the, they just tossed them. No, no, <laughs> not in New Mexico, you don't, you don't come and trash our place. <laughs> because the, the tin had a sacred origin and it, had a, it came from God. It came to New Mexico from God. And so the New Mexican people took it, uh, worked it, turned it into works of art, and religious works of art. to screw up the world, but to make it prettier, more sacred. And uh, my final question is, uh, which present or past Santeros do you admire? Well, you know, I used to, I, uh, I used to admire Moyeno, who was the person that did this big carving at Chimayo, a famous mm -hmm. place in New Mexico. And uh, 
was a, and was a very prolific artist. He, he has work is at Santa Cruz de la Cañada and other places, San Francisco de Asís Church. Uh, but you know what? The public didn't like him. It's kind of like too primitive, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was just as hard to, follow, to copy Moyeno as it was to copy anybody else. <laughs> But I, so I kind of I kind of drifted away from him, and I came to A.J. Santero, one of the classic era guys, because he was he had this more open style, you know. And he could he incorporated Native American elements in his stuff. He he did all kinds of things that were uh, one step outside of the tradition, and I liked that idea. I liked that idea a lot. But in terms of my own uh, preference, I like to work in natural wood, and I do uh, stain and paint my. Uh, Santos, uh, both uh, statues and, and uh, relief carvings and crosses. But I, I, li I, if all things equal, I would like to see that natural uh, aspect come through. Are there any um, Santeros in here that you really admire? Oh, I re really admire Jay Seal. I like, I think very highly of Megan Dianza and Teresa and Kathy Shaw. Uh, those are classy people. Those are, they, they produce some classy art, you know. And I can honest, I can honestly say that I, most all the people in the gallery I found quite uh, at their task. You know, this I mean, this is master work you're seeing in this gallery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but in terms of what kind of santero, I guess that would be. I put it that way. I see myself as you know, artist educator. A lot of artists don't care to do that second part, and either because of their personality, yeah, because of their training, or because of their, you know, uh, many artists are introverts, for example, and, and so it's rare. I mean, there are some extroverted artists, but very rare. And they are, they're kind of seen as oddities, you know, like Picasso and other artists that were very, Biro and other people that were very, uh, Peter Paul Rubens, other people that were very uh, promoting of their mm -hmm. art. They were seen as oddballs, you know, it's not, you know, that's not quite the way you're supposed to be. The artist educators, the people I would tend to follow, you know, like uh, Charlie Carrillo in New Mexico and Kathy uh, and uh, Maria Romero Cash and others who both teach about it and actually practice it. And that's what I, that's what I aspire to.